Hey everybody, welcome to a special uh, blog post here on the Sunday, filling in for Ryan, calling it Pattern Talk tonight. In case you didn't see my picture earlier, I thought this Olaf pinwheel, somebody left in there. We have a hurricane, Olaf, in the Eastern Pacific, not in the Atlantic. All right, uh, lots to talk about, as always the case, even though the weather is actually pretty quiet, and for weather enthusiasts, boring, really, for this week. Um, there are some things to keep an eye on. Now, I'm going to go through some of the ideas for the longer term. Keep in mind, I'm still working on the winter forecast. It's taking forever, and I'm trying to cut down some of the stuff I said because I don't want to keep you in front of your computer for like 20 hours. <laughs> and uh, at this rate, you probably will be. Um, but I uh, still hope to have everything ready for uh, Halloween night. Um, so I uh, appreciate your patience on that. And just keep in mind, it's just a discussion and forecast, not anything um, with a high confidence because you know how this goes. Forecasting this far out is always it's fun, but the science in it is still very much a challenge. All right, so I'll discuss all that later. Let's talk about what's happening now. We've got high pressure control of our weather at the moment. We've had a cold weekend. I talked to the Weather Service. Uh, the University of Kentucky Ag Department is going to survey the area tomorrow to determine if the growing season indeed has ended for a large enough area to cease the frost and freeze alerts from here on out. Now, the Weather Service believes they have. That's why they did not issue an alert for our area tonight, even though we're going to be pretty cold tonight to frost level. Um, the exception pretty much is the local downtown area through the Waterson Expressway, maybe to some portions of the Snyder. Did not get a freeze, but um, we understand that. And I know a lot of you that are watching this right now say, we didn't get a freeze, we didn't get any frost. But again, they look at it as into the wider scope for advisories and alerts. And it looks like they are they will cease those alerts until the growing season begins again, which will not happen until the spring. So in case you're wondering why we're just as cold tonight, why, would, why don't we have an alert? It's because they only issue them when something happens to vegetation that's significant. And that's when it's either growing or it's been growing all season long and it's about to die. All right, so having said all of that fun stuff, Here's the high responsible for all that, and it is allowing the uh, the cooling effect here to allow some of that lake effect snow across the northeast. They have picked up measurable snow in the Adirondacks, especially in the northeast part of the country. They're loving that. But this high is huge. I mean, no wonder. That's why we're so cold. But, I mean, it, it's keeping everybody dry over a large real estate here. So what's going to happen for us? We're going to wait and see what's going to develop here across this front that came through here. If anything tropical can get going, and how is that going to behave? We've been talking about this for a while. At the same time, we still have a very active northern jet moving through Canada. And the biggest debate is still there. How much interaction, if any, are these two branches going to have over the next 7 to 10 days? Is the northern branch just going to keep on flowing, and the southern part here, uh, the, the tropical part, just kind of bathes itself and stays down here? Nothing happens. If that's the case... We're just going to get little fronts passing through, but very little will happen in our temperature category. I still think the tropics will eventually become more of a player, and we're betting on that, but it may take closer to Halloween to really see something wild happening into our neck of the woods. Between now and then, it does look very much on the quiet side. Having said that, here is the Euro. Uh, later this week, it does bring in this weak front later this week to the north. Again, the northern branch active, but with high pressure still here, the same one we're dealing with. It's just going to be pushed a little more to the south, but it's still going to be on the maps. I don't know why that's not drawing. There we go. Uh, it is still there, but because it is strong, uh, the fronts come in and then they kind of sag like this. They produce clouds and maybe a shower north of here, but then they just fade off the map. They can't push all the way through Kentucky uh, like the previous fronts have done. So it's active to our north pretty much all week, but we may lock out and remain rain-free until we get something that could emerge out of the Gulf where it gets things kicked up and that's what the Euro is hinting off from maybe Saturday night into Sunday. Some models push it back into Monday and then stall it out over us into uh, all the way through at least the 28th of the month. So uh, a lot of questions in the longer term when it comes to when is our next chance of rainfall going to happen. So um, be patient with us on the extended part when it comes to rain and, and don't cancel your plans next weekend because we may very well end up with a dry weekend and this may get pushed all the way into the following week when it comes to any chance. So that's how the rain chances are looking. So let's talk about the pattern aloft. But then I want you to notice, notice how many low pressures keep digging and digging and digging and digging here across Canada. And notice how much colder it keeps getting as well. Here we go through the 23rd. And then by the 28th, this is the GFS. I mean, this is some cold stuff. This to me looks like an obvious negative Arctic oscillation that's happening here. The cold air is dislodged. Now it needs a way to get into the United States for you cold and snow weather lovers. That is the problem uh, because the pattern is not exactly set up 
perfectly for that to happen. So Canada is enjoying that. But just like we've seen in the wintertime, you build up cold air long enough and it keeps building and building and building and eventually it is going to drop. The question is at what angle is it going to drop and when? Here's the European model. Very similar, showing the cold air uh, being brought about these areas of low pressure all the way through the end of the month. Now, it's showing it at, at least a chance closer to Halloween that something may try to drop down. In fact, we're, we're seeing the snowpack begin to change as well. The snowpack is starting to increase across Canada. That's only going to make this air colder and colder. Yes, as it moves over the bare ground, over the lower 48, it, there will be friction and it will modify. That is to be expected this time of the year. We really don't see uh, these numbers in Canada really don't directly transport to us until you get into the core of winter in January to where there is no bare ground. It's all snowpack all the way to, to the Ohio River and at that point there is no friction really so the air mass doesn't really modify and you go sub-zero. That's how you go below zero in Kentucky is when you have the snowpack that far to the south. With the snowpack being that far to the north, it, the air will modify due to friction so these are cool snaps, cold snaps at times. Uh, but the cold air building only guarantees that it'll be even colder and it'll have less room to moderate, if that makes sense. So it is interesting to see that because we saw it last year. Now, looking at the indices, and we'll cover this a lot in the, in the winter outlook, but the Arctic Oscillation on the Euro is matching the maps there. It's going negative. It's negative on GFS, but struggling a little bit there. Now, this is what we really would need to really allow for a path for that cold air to eventually go is uh, was part of it, but the NAO is a big part of it, and that would be the blocking pattern. And it's kind of holding steady, neutral, and, and GFS just has no idea what to do with it. And the PNA, interestingly enough, now going positive would allow uh, for there to be a, a dip into the eastern half of the country every once in a while. The GFS, again, these are the different model runs. It's hard to see, I apologize. But this is the most recent one. It is a positive one. But they're all over the place. And you can tell the GFS has had a poor record in the past of trying to nail that down compared to what the Euro has done. So the Euro is what we're going with uh, at this point. And we're seeing hints of it. Now, well, I'm about to show you some what we call the, the deterministic models where they the models that run every you know six hours, four hours, the ones that you guys get all excited about and you tweet them out. I'm going to show you a couple of those, and I'm not showing you because this is what I think is going to happen on this particular day. I'm showing you to tell you that it is seen. The models are taking the negative Arctic Oscillation, and it's interjecting into the math formulas. Basically, and this is what you get, is uh, the GFS saying there's going to be a cold dip. I mean, this would mean snow flurries and snowflakes into the Ohio Valley, and for us, probably more sleet potential. And this would be very close to Halloween, if not a day after. But close, give or take. The Canadian, a little quicker. This is showing for the 28th of October. It is showing a similar deal where the area of low pressure goes up the Carolinas, but a cold dive behind it. This would likely be sleet that could mix in with some of the rain. Again, I don't want you to say that I'm Brian Good is saying there's going to sleet on the 28th, it's going to snow on Halloween. No, I'm not saying that. I'm showing these maps to illustrate to you guys how the models are seeing the pattern changing with uh, what's, what's happening in Canada and the models are struggling with how to ha interact with the tropics. We see this battle every year. You get so much heat energy in the tropics still and warmth and you've got winter developing in Canada and you've got the two of them trying to interact and you get some wild model runs, phantom storms many times. So you gotta go with caution on this, but at least we are seeing it. So that means for you snow and bots lovers, the fun is about to begin is what this is telling me. Um, the CFS model, which is an American model for longer term, boy, it's really had some problems. This is what it's saying. It's saying a cold blast before Halloween. Okay, well, we're seeing hints of that already. Um, but by the first few days of November, it's saying a warm up. Just the other day, it was showing a cold snap. Okay, CFS, you need some work. All right, here's the latest run of the Japanese model, the new update that just came in. Here's the water temperatures. This is a good sign. You still see water temperatures all up and down the Pacific to Alaska because that is a good sign of uh, cold air for us. Here's El Nino shifting a little more to the center. That is important. More on that on the Halloween outlook. As far as precipitation goes, it's showing wetter than normal across the south, uh, drier than normal to our north. And when you look at temperatures, it's going for a colder than normal pattern across the south in the Plain States. Now, some of that could be cloud-induced. Uh, a lot of rainfall, perhaps, and some snowfall, but a lot of clouds, and that keeps you below normal. I could see that. And then warmer to the north. But when you compare the winter forecast from this October to last October, pretty similar. And we knew what happened, or we uh, saw what happened last October. So 
I'm going to stop there. <laughs> That's enough for the fun and games for right now. I've gone like nine, almost ten minutes. That's way too much. I apologize. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll keep an eye on things as always the case, guys. And I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm filling in for Kevin this week, so I'll see you tomorrow evening. And, of course, after football tonight.